From Outpost Gray and Grant Thornton Public Sector, we provide you the CyberFed News Roundup, tech news that matters. Hello and happy Friday, August 26, 2022. I'm your host, Jack Scott, and today I'm providing you the CyberFed News Roundup for the week of August 22nd. Let's get into it. Capitol Hill is already ramping up and planning to conduct its own investigation on the newest allegations on Twitter's security measures. The whistleblower who uncovered these security concerns is the security chief of Twitter, Peter Zatko, who filed allegations on the company misleading regulators on their lax security and spam. The House of Representative members are concerned because of Twitter's impact on the United States information and political ecosystem. The whistleblower's allegations reflect a willful disregard for protecting user data. These claims may show dangerous data privacy and security risk for Twitter users worldwide if these claims are accurate. The United States Marine Corps is pushing ahead with their 2030 goal for better force design to increase defense cyber operations. The Marine Corps awarded stealing technology with a $168 million task order to help them develop a suite of tools for defensive cyber operations. This veteran-owned company will develop a self-contained event cyber weapon to support operations to conduct vulnerability assessments, mapping cyber train, and responding to incidences. Stealing Technology plans to begin work right away and work through September 2027. The Department of Interior is finally off the Office of Inspector General's list after successfully identifying and responding to a simulated attack by the OIG. In 2015 and 2018, a similar test was conducted on the DUI network, and the DUI security protocols did not meet the OIG standards. The 2015 test showed vulnerabilities in public-facing systems, and in 2018, DUI failed to identify and respond to a simulated attack. Since then, DUI has taken the necessary steps to increase its cyber maturity, which was witnessed in the most recent test. OIG warns against becoming complacent and states that DUI must remain vigilant and continue to work on its cybersecurity resiliency. As midterms are nearing, federal, state, and local election agencies say they are ready for November. With the midterm elections merely 74 days away, officials with various federal, state, local and private agencies are not taking any chances regarding security. Over a three-day span last week, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency, in cooperation with the National Association of Secretaries of State and the National Association of State Election Directors, conducted a tabletop exercise. This exercise allowed each agency the chance to test and hone its response to anticipated scenarios. While these exercises typically occur on an annual basis, they increased the testing not long after the House Oversight and Reform Committee forecasted an uptick of election misinformation. At the end of last week's exercise, Jen Easterly, CISA's director, stated, this week's exercise was just one of many examples of the year-round coordination taking place among the federal government, state, and local election officials, and the private sector to prepare for the 2022 general elections. CISA this week published unknown vulnerability on the Pan OS firmware. Organizations with Palo Alto networking devices with the Pan OS firmware should patch immediately. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency sent out an alert that there is a vulnerability in multiple versions of the Pan OS that is actively being exploited. This vulnerability affects the following versions of the Pan OS firmware, and they include PA series, VM series, and CN series. The vulnerability severity is 8.6, which puts it in the high category. According to the Palo Alto Network, a reflective denial of service attack is how they learned of this vulnerability and have since published a patch. Immediate patching is recommended. However, some temporary workarounds and solutions can be found on the CISA site. Many U.S. government officials are still monitoring the tensions between China and Taiwan since Nancy Pelosi's visit on August 2nd. 
After Pelosi's visit, China began increasing its military presence outside of Taiwan, and the U.S. cybersecurity community warns that China is laying the grounds to attack. Taiwan is taking action to increase its defense spending for new fighter jets and increase cybersecurity. Chris Krebs also mentioned a possible attack from China during his brief at the recent Black Hat conference in Las Vegas. China stated the multiple visits made by lawmakers in August infringed on America's One China policy, a policy that states that the U.S. acknowledges that Beijing government as the sole government of China. That concludes your Cyber Fed News Roundup for the week of August 22nd. I hope you enjoyed what you heard here. Do me a favor, make sure that you like, subscribe, and I would love it if you would share this episode out with others. I look forward to seeing you all next week.